This is it. This is the bike that Danny McCaskill and Fabio rode to superstardom, and now I have one. Let's get to work. Welcome to my Inspired Bicycles Quick Start Guide, a breakdown of the new Inspired 4Play Trials bike with a walk through the elements that make it so special. I'm going to share a few setup tips and finish with a quick tutorial of one of the most basic and important moves you can do on this bike, which will get you started on your journey towards street trials supremacy. As I mentioned, this is the bike that helped the rise of riders like Danny McCaskill and Fabio Vidmer, to name a few. The bike is designed specifically to carry out all the tricks that they throw down in their video edits and will make your life exponentially easier when it comes to doing the same. Every part on this bike is hand-picked to meet that need, and I'll take a minute here to walk you through some of the finer points. The integrated bash ring on here is made to protect the chain ring. If you come up short on a bunny hop or a big hop, you'll save your chain and drivetrain by hitting this piece of metal instead. This chain looks super sturdy. No worries about snapping it on a big gap with this thing on there. Magura MT7 hydraulic brakes, dual piston for some serious stopping action. Exactly what we need on a trials bike. This stem cap is something special. It's got a space in it to slide the front brake through, so you can do tail whips without having to worry about the brakes getting in the way. On a normal bike, you'd have to saw through a star nut and some other metal pieces to make this work. Super dialed. Maxxis Holy Roller Tires, a perfect combo of grip and smooth rolling. This pattern kind of reminds me of the old Monty tires back from the 1990s. Trial Tech riser stem and handlebar. High rise for big bunny hops, way different from my other trials bike setups. Well, everything didn't go according to plan with the bike build. In fact, I got almost all the way through and I realized there was one important component that needed to be handled. This little buddy right here. It's gotta go through the stem and head tube. That way I can do tail whoops on this bike. So now I'm gonna do a little tutorial on how to route your front brake through your stem and head tube. Here we go. First things first, I definitely recommend doing this somewhere uncarpeted just in case things go sideways. Hydraulic fluid can be a real mess if it manages to leak on the floor. Step one in this process, remove your front wheel and pads in your disc brake. If you get fluid on any of these items, it's game over for that brake. Better safe than sorry. Take them out and put them somewhere out of the splash zone until the job is done. Step two, flip the brake so your reservoir is facing the ceiling. This will hopefully ensure that no fluid dribbles out of the top. I know some mechanics who completely remove this part and stand it up on a workbench, but this way here worked fine for me. Next, you'll remove the plastic cover to access the metal bolt, which secures the line to the brake lever. Break out an eight millimeter wrench and slowly start to unscrew the bolt. Do this part slowly and carefully because when the bolt comes out, you'll be opening up a hydraulic line and exposing it to the air. The end of this line will have a metal bulb on it, commonly referred to as an olive, which is a soft piece of metal that typically squishes inside the lever. Normally when you remove hydraulic lines, you have to replace this piece every time, but if you do it carefully, you can skip that part. Now what you'll do is slowly lower the hydraulic line to the junction of the fork and the head tube, then slowly guide it back through the middle of the fork. One of the pro tips that I got from Eric Porter was to tape the metal bolt onto the hydraulic line so it doesn't slide all the way down to the caliper. After you're done threading it through the head tube and stem, slide the top cap over the line. This is the part where I realized the plastic cover wasn't going to fit. And tighten the stem cap back onto the steerer tube. Now that you've got that done, you're in the home stretch. Carefully reinsert the hydraulic line into the brake and tighten down the bolt. Whatever you do, do not squeeze the lever here. Without the pads and rotor in place, you're gonna have a bad time. Okay, if you made it this far without any issues, you are in the home stretch. Flip the lever back down to its normal position and reinstall the disc brake pads and front wheel. Once you have everything reinstalled and tightened, go ahead and cycle the lever to recirculate the brake fluid throughout the system. If you did it right, you should feel the brake grabbing like normal. If you lost fluid, you'll notice that the lever is coming in closer to the bar than normal. In that instance, you're going to need to do a full bleed of the brake line. Not the end of the world, and definitely a bit easier than rerouting the line. Congratulations if you made it this far. Now all you need to do is learn to ride this thing. Next, let me give you a quick tutorial on how to get on the back wheel. If you want to dig a bit deeper into the basics of trials riding, I'll link to a longer tutorial video on my channel that goes into five different moves that will also be super helpful getting you started. A couple quick setup things before we dive in. The angle of your brakes will have an effect on your back wheel hops. If you're planning to spend a majority of your time on the back wheel, you'll rotate the brake levers down. This makes it so when you get on the back wheel, your wrists are flat and it's super comfortable to stay there for a while. Let's hop to it. There are three ways to get onto the back wheel. The first way is to roll to a stop and grab a handful of front brakes so you rock up onto the front wheel. 
then grab the back brake and roll onto the back wheel. This one is easiest and you can let the momentum of rocking backward keep you hopping backward once you're on the back wheel. Everyone seems to have the easiest time hopping backwards and that's totally okay when you're learning. You're putting the back wheel under you and until you get comfortable enough to add in pedal kicks, totally acceptable. The next way to get onto the back wheel is to put your front wheel up on something about one and a half to two feet high. You can just set your wheel on this ledge, grab the brakes and stand up on the bike. It's not the most glamorous way to get on the back wheel, but at least it puts you in roughly the right position of where you'll be on the bike. Set the pedals level, hop on, and slowly hop away from the ledge on your back wheel. Bonus points if you can hop back and put your front wheel where you started. The last and best way to get on your back wheel is to slowly push on the pedals while you take pressure off the rear brake. Once you get up on the back wheel in this style, you can reset the pedals and push forward again. This movement of pushing the pedals is the foundation of the pedal kick which you'll eventually use all the time with your riding, especially if you're trying to do big gaps or side hops. Now that you're getting onto the back wheel, your goal is to do as many hops as possible without dropping the front wheel. Challenge yourself to set a new personal best every time you ride, and once you get super comfortable, start trying some variations like spinning around or hopping up and over small obstacles. So there's our quick start guide to the inspired four play bike. Thanks for joining me and please don't forget to subscribe to this channel so you don't miss the next tutorial and my first real ride on this bike. I'm so fired up to get this thing going, we're going to have some